ओके सो टुडे आई विल डिस्टर्ब सम आई विल डिस्कस सम बेसिक्स ऑफ फेस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन First, what what is basically phase transformation? Suppose we have a liquid and that transforms to solid. So this type of transitions we call phase transformation. Also, there are solid state phase transformations. like precipitation martensitic transformation eutectic eutectoid eutectic involves liquid so eutectoid we can say massive transformation all these come under solid state phase transformations so let's see first what is the driving force for phase transformation so first let us consider one graph enthalpy or in this side we can take g both and on this axis we have temperature so suppose this is our 298 kelvin and we know we assume enthalpy at at 298 kelvin is equal to 0 this is considered the standard state at normal atmospheric pressure at p equal to 1 atmosphere this is usually we assume this so if we plot enthalpy of solid the curve will go something like this at 298 it will cut here and then it will come here similarly what will be for liquid we know the enthalpy of liquid is higher than enthalpy of solid why because enthalpy is nothing but cp dt Okay, so we know CP of liquid is higher than CP of solid. Last class I also discussed this. Why? Because liquid has more random structure. Okay, so what happens when we heat the liquid? The atoms can vibrate. more so they absorb more energy so that is why the definition of cp itself is the amount of energy or heat that is required to increase the temperature by 1 degree okay so as these can absorb more energy so more energy we have to supply to in order to increase the temperature of liquid as compared to that of solid so that is why if cp is higher then enthalpy will also be higher that's why so this curve is for liquid 
and this one is for solid and suppose somewhere here there is melting point this is suppose our this temperature is our melting point so this difference between the enthalpy of solid and the enthalpy of liquid this one is called latent heat of fusion So when we melt a material, we have to melt a material that means from solid to liquid, we have to apply this latent heat of fusion, we have to supply this to the solid so that it will convert to liquid. Okay, so I will discuss this curve in the next slide. <clears throat> I will draw it clearly. This is wrong. I should so what was wrong because this slope of this curve that is dh by dt that is basically cp. Okay, so we know cp of liquid is higher than cp of solid, that's why this slope has to be more steeper than this solid curve. Okay, so this slope is bit higher than as compared to this because the slope is nothing but CP. Okay, so here is our melting point, this temperature, and this is our latent heat of fusion. So if you consider G, what will be that? Variation of G with T, we know which kind of curve. It is something like this. This is the variation of G with temperature. And what is the slope of this? dg by dt we know minus s where did this come from we know dz equal to maxwell's relation bdp minus sdt okay so at constant pressure we consider what uh, one atmosphere so what will be dz by dt equal to minus s so this slope this is minus s this should match here this is the melting point this is where the transition occurs this is free energy of liquid and this black is free energy of solid so we know g equal to h minus ts okay so this is our h curve consider the solid only so consider the solid black curve here 
g equal to h minus ds so at any temperature suppose we consider this temperature what will be this gap this is our h and this is our g so the gap will be t delta s and what is the driving force it is shown already here suppose this is our melting point so below this what is the free energy of liquid is higher as compared to free energy of solid so there is a driving force for phase transformation below the melting point for liquid to solid so how do we write this driving force so below the melting point at t less than tm free energy of solid minus free energy free energy of liquid is negative so this is the required condition for any phase transformation the free energy change must be negative okay so this is the driving force suppose at this temperature this is the driving force that will drive the phase transformation from liquid to solid and this one we call delta gv volume free energy because when there is liquid is there and some solid will form like some sphere or something will form those that will have some volume so i'll go to that later so this is called this free energy difference between liquid and solid below the melting point is called the volume free energy or the driving force for the phase transformation okay so <clears throat> another important point So what is this when temperature tends to zero this curve the slope will go will become horizontal okay so the curve will become completely horizontal when the temperature tends to zero that means this line so the slope will be zero for both g and h the slope will be zero when the temperature tends to zero at constant pressure how to find the driving force so basically delta g v suppose we consider first a single component system like liquid solid so i'll draw that again this is the free energy versus temperature curve this is the melting point so any temperature you can suppose at this temperature this is the delta gv or the driving force and we consider pressure equal to one atmosphere so <coughs> what we need to calculate this g so we need cp of solid and cp of liquid from these two values we can entirely calculate the g
so we know <coughs> g equal to h minus t s so separately we will see h and we will see t and then we will combining them we can get the g so first let us consider the enthalpy Okay, this is 0 Kelvin. We know the enthalpy how it changes. It will go like this in liquid region. This is enthalpy of liquid associated with Cp of liquid. Then there will be latent fusion, certain enthalpy drop, and then it will go like this. So, again see the slope here and the slope here is different why this is this is this is basically nothing but cp the slope of liquid is higher than slope of solid because cp of liquid is greater than cp of solid <coughs> so how do you calculate this enthalpy change Suppose some undercooling temperature is given. Like at this temperature, we have to calculate the enthalpy change. So in the question, it never asks that to calculate the delta H at the melting point <coughs> because it is not possible. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> because we need some driving force for the phase transformation that comes basically from undercooling. That means we have to go below the melting point. transformation to start and how this undercooling is associated I will discuss this later so in the question it will ask that at this temperature suppose this is the melting point so below the melting point at some specific temperature it, it will ask to calculate the enthalpy change for the liquid to solid transformation so how to do that so we know enthalpy is a state function That means if we create a cycle and our initial and final points are fixed, then we will get the same values. It just depends on the initial and final point, not on the path. So we will take like this one A this point we take hp hc and hd so we have to calculate hd to a transformation occurring below the melting point at this temperature okay so this value we have to calculate so we will go in cycle like this here here again here so this will be the same because the final point and initial and final points are same so either we go this way or we go this way this way this way basically same in gate usually they ask this kind of questions like some undercooling is given and at that temperature you have to calculate the enthalpy or entropy or free energy so how will you go first <coughs> dc here this path then plus cb plus ba so cycle is complete we will start from here solid and then go and we reach liquid so this we can write 
d to c that means h c minus h t always final minus initial plus c to b can write h b minus h c plus b to a that means h a minus h b so c to d what will be that c to d this path that is t to tm this temperature this temperature to this is our tm cp of what this is solid this part is totally solid here it is liquid so cp of solid dt plus this path what is this delta hm i hope this is clear then plus this path what is this we are considering under cooled liquid okay so liquid is here to here then it transforms here ideally but we are, we are taking that to this temperature and that is still liquid so we have to take cp of liquid that is which temperature tm this is our tm to t so remember the limits here notice the limits tm to t cp of liquid dt so is it clear till now or any doubts Okay, so we can rearrange this delta H M minus just reverse the limits of this T to T M. That is why this minus sign because it was plus. If we change the limit, then it will the sign will be reversed. So it is minus T M C P of liquid D T plus this term. So this we can write final term. this delta cp equal to cp of solid minus cp of liquid this is specifically for liquid to solid transformation that is why this is final minus initial always if it is solid to liquid then you have to reverse this sign always final minus initial so we get delta h similarly we can get delta s liquid to solid
this is nothing but the entropy of fusion that is the enthalpy of fusion the latent heat of fusion divided by temperature at which temperature we are considering the transformation So we have del H now, del H now. So now you can calculate G delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so this is one, this is two. Just combine these two and you'll get this. at the melting point what is delta gm delta hm minus t delta sm so <clears throat> as we saw here at the melting point this is zero gl minus gs is equal to zero at this point so this is basically delta gv so that will be zero here at the melting point this is zero so this implies that delta sm equal to delta hm by t now we'll put this delta g liquid to solid minus t in place of delta sm we'll put this delta hm by t tm this is melting point So this melting point minus the temperature of concentration this difference is called under cooling this part so this is an important relation just remember this I'll write it here clearly delta GV delta H delta T by TM and this delta H is latent heat of fusion for melting or for any kind of transformation that is the enthalpy change of the transformation for specific melting you can call this latent heat of fusion or for any solid state transformation you can call this heat of transformation Now let's consider nucleation.
solid to liquid again the same curve So we consider this temperature T, so at T less than Tm. So what will happen initially it will be liquid. Suppose the volume equal to Bl. <coughs> And it has some specific free energy of liquid that is it has some values joule per meter cube so this will turn because the temperature is less than tm it will transform to some solid will form inside the liquid okay so this is phase one this is phase two Phase 2 in the sense initially it was that then it will transform the solid has nucleated inside the liquid it has the volume Bs suppose so what will be the volume of liquid now that is Bl minus Bs that is Bl dash and it has certain specific free energy solid it has some value joule per meter cube okay so what is the total free energy at one that means at this point that is bl into gl volume into the volume free and total volume of liquid into the volume free energy that is the initial free energy total free energy at state one so g total at second state what is that volume of liquid that is bl minus bs because some solid has formed here into free energy of liquid plus volume of solid into free energy of solid Okay, so these are volume free energy, this and this, another energy will be there that is the surface energy because due to the formation of this solid inside liquid there will be interfacial energy. That means we have to apply some energy to create this interface, solid liquid interface. So that will come in the second part that is the surface area of the solid into gamma SL the solid liquid interfacial energy so what will be delta G that means G2 minus G1 this is our G2 this is our G1 So just do some rearrangement here this minus this so you will get the final result Bs Gs minus Gl
Eh, gak mancer. Okay, so what is this BS? We have considered a spherical nucleus. The solid has formed, so it is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So we can write the change in free energy, delta gr. This r corresponds to the radius of this solid. Four by three pi r cube. Gs minus gl. Plus what is this area of this surface? Four pi r square. That spherical surface. Gamma sl. So in this, this term is negative. Because this is the driving force we have the free energy of solid is less than free energy of liquid that's why the phase transformation starts so this part is always negative and this part is the driving force and this part we have to supply externally so until these two balance there will be no phase transformation this part this negative part has to be bigger than this part then only there will be driving force and this will be negative This is the expression for homogeneous nucleation. And how to calculate the critical radius? Just differentiate it and put it to zero. So this is the differentiation just put it to 0 and you will get r star minus 2 gamma sl by delta gv again what is the delta gv we discussed in the last part delta h delta t by tm so from here you can see if you increase the undercooling that is with del t what will happen delta gv will increase as delta t increases delta g v will also increase so if delta g v increases here in the denominator it is there so r star will decrease so this is the reason we get finer grains when undercooling is high So how the surface energy varies, it varies like this, <coughs> 4 pi square gamma sl and the volume free energy varies like this. So what will be the resultant? It will be something like this. Now here this part is called delta g star, the critical energy barrier for nucleation and this is called the critical nucleus
दिस टू रिलेशन यू रिमेम्बर R star we calculated there and put the R star in that equation. In this, just put R star. Then you will get this value. Delta this star equal to sixteen pi gamma s l cube by three del g b square. Another important factor is nucleation rate. So we generally write in this form i equal to i zero exponential minus this is the energy barrier. And this is the energy barrier for diffusion. Okay, so I zero basically that depends on the jump frequency. Number of atoms that are faced. Towards the transforming phase. So this is a constant. And these two values are important. So, but diffusion we can consider like this. Okay, so we have one atom here. If it has to go to this place. to jump from here to here this barrier this is called the delta g d this is liquid this is solid from liquid to solid if one atom has to go this will be the energy barrier diffusion barrier for this and what is the rate this is proportional to exponential minus delta g d by k t the rate at which this atom will jump to this From one to two, the atom will jump. The rate is proportional to exponential, the diffusion barrier divided by kT. And one important factor, delta Z D is independent of temperature. So let's plot the graph for nucleation rate. How that varies with temperature. This is very important. Okay, so suppose this is our TM or melting point. In this axis, as I wrote, I equal to I zero exponential minus delta J star plus delta Z D by K T. Okay, so we have two factors. One is exponential minus delta j star by k t. Another one is exponential minus delta j d by k t. We will see how these two factors 
value temperature so how will delta this star value temperature <coughs> as temperature goes up what is the expression for delta z star 16 pi gamma sl cube by 3 del g v square okay so here where is the temperature factor that is here del g v we know <coughs> del s del t by tm so if temperature increases what will happen this delta t will decrease so if delta t will decrease then what will happen delta gv will decrease so if delta gv decreases here it is in denominator so this will increase see the relation how it is connected as temperature goes up because if temperature is going this down basically the difference within the melting point and the temperature where the transformation occurs is called under cooling so if this temperature is going up that means this gap is decreasing gradually that means delta t is decreasing or our under cooling is decreasing <coughs> so this will decrease delta gv and delta gv is the denominator in the denominator of this expression delta z star so if this is decreasing this will increase So the curve will go like this. This is for exponential minus delta g star by kt. Another one delta g d. So how will this change? We know as temperature goes down, diffusion becomes difficult. Okay, so here T is there in the denominator and it is negative. That means this curve will go like this. This is for exponential minus delta G D by G T. So this is independent of temperature. This delta G D is independent of temperature. So only this is the factor. here also t term is there but in the delta g star this is squarely related okay so this is more dominating this delta t term in the delta g v square it is there so this controls more than this temperature so this is not important because this delta g star contains a square term of temperature so that dominates so resultant how will be the overall nucleation rate it will go in the middle it will be maximum and then it will go like this nucleation rate the final curve is like this initially it will be low because the driving force is low because under cooling is low then it will start gradually increasing then at some point diffusion will be difficult because of low temperature so it will again start decreasing here also graphically how the 
delta the star changes with temperature suppose three temperatures you have t1 t2 and t3 so what should be the temperatures what is the relation between the temperatures t1 t2 t3 this should be the relation because as i explained <coughs> as t goes up that means under cooling is decreasing so under cooling decreasing means so delta t equal to tm minus t so as under cooling decreases delta g star will go up and r star will also go up understand this as temperature goes up both delta g star and r star will go up so here it is delta g star for 3 temperature t3 okay i hope this is clear <coughs> so is this clear so now i'll give one sample question just try to solve calculate free energy of nucleation <coughs> of ice from water at minus 20 degree c the data given are melting point equal to 0 degree c you have to take it in kelvin always during calculations you have to take temperature in kelvin six point zero two kilo joule per mole this is the latent rate of fusion of ice gamma of liquid solid equal to zero point zero seven six joule per meter square <coughs> this is the molar volume bm this is the molar volume of ice that means one mole of ice contains this much volume so can you calculate this what is the r star or just calculate delta g star for this transformation
so here the tricky part is this is usually this delta hm or delta z b we calculate that is in joule per meter cube so here it is given kilojoule per mole so we have to convert that to meter cube that's why this molar volume is given here so i have discussed already this delta z b equal to del h del t y t m and this is this molar volume have to divide here only then this unit will get joule per meter cube okay so first calculate this the all values are given delta h is given delta t is 20 melting point is given 298 kelvin to 73 kelvin and this bm is also given so first calculate this delta gv then what is delta z star just put all this value here you will get the answer will be around 7.78 10 to the 16 joules here this part is tricky you just some questions they give molar volume you just have to divide the molar volume by delta gb and then you can directly use this Actually in the previous one class I was sick so I did not take one class that's why they told me to take two hours today but there is only one person. So shall I continue or stop? You want to continue? Okay, so I'll take one more question. This is from Raghavan, I think. Calculate the ratio of the surface energy. Term. To the volume energy term and 
at the critical condition. You have to use this equation. Just try this. I'll give like three, four minutes, then I will solve it. That means at this point. At this point, you have to calculate the ratio of surface energy to volume free energy. <clears throat> okay so i will solve this now so we just have to differentiate this 
we have already done done this This is gamma SL, solid liquid interfacial energy. So here what we do, we multiply 3 into this here 4 by 3 pi r cube delta g v. Here we have added one more r because it was r square, we have done r cube so we have to divide one so 8 pi r square gamma sl is equal to 1. So this term is our volume free energy. And this here we can write this as 8 pi r square gamma sl we can write 2 into 4 pi r square gamma sl. Okay, so this will be 3 into volume energy term divided by 2 into interfacial or surface energy term is equal to 1 that means what will be surface energy by volume energy just reverse it it will be 3 by 2 this is the answer so here we just multiplied one more r divided 3 multiplied 3 and here we multiplied one more r because here we have added 1 so we divided 1 it was 8 pi r gamma sl we just added more one more r to balance this and we have the two terms here 4 by 3 pi r cube delta gv pi r square 4 pi r square gamma sl So hello Prakash, am I audible? You want to continue or you want to stop? Just only one person is there.
ओके सो आई विल स्टॉप नाउ विल डिस्कस इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास